This presentation aims to offer an overview of ICU sleep, concentrating on sleep patterns within the ICU, the factors contributing to sleep disturbances, and the initiatives within the ICU aimed at promoting better sleep, encompassing environmental, non-pharmacological, and pharmacological approaches. Sleep in the ICU represents an inherent dilemma, as sleep is crucial for its rejuvenating properties. Yet ICU care necessitates frequent monitoring, and the ICU environment itself is not conducive to restful sleep. A typical adult sleep pattern consists of several stages. Stage 1, or N1, is the initial stage of sleep, lasting for a few minutes and marking the transition from wakefulness to sleep, during which it's easy to be awakened. Stage 2, or N2, is a deeper stage where the body prepares for deep sleep and accounts for a significant portion of total sleep time. Stage 3, or N3, often called slow wave sleep and might be divided into two stages, stage 3 and 4. It is the deepest non REM stage, making it difficult to wake someone, and it is crucial for physical restoration and recovery. REM sleep, which stands for rapid eye movement, occurs cyclically throughout the night, characterized by vivid dreaming, and is thought to be essential for cognitive and emotional processing, with rapid eye movements and brain activity resembling wakefulness. A night of sleep in an adult human is characterized by a cyclic alternation of non-REM sleep and REM cycles of an average of 90-minute duration each. Typically, stages 3 and 4 sleep tend to predominate in non-REM during the first two cycles of sleep. Consequently, the first third of the night is usually considered the deepest sleep. REM sleep and stage two of non-REM sleep predominate in the last third of the night. Patients on mechanical ventilation often experience altered sleep patterns compared to individuals not requiring such support. As you see on the graph, these patients spend more time in stage 1 and less time in stage 3 and 4 with less time in REM sleep 2 with decreased efficiency of their sleep. Patients undergoing mechanical ventilation frequently experience diminished sleep quality, characterized by fragmented sleep. Furthermore, REM sleep, which plays a vital role in dreaming and cognitive function, is typically reduced in these individuals. Additionally, non-REM sleep stages can be impacted, with stage 1 being extended due to frequent awakenings, stage 2 remaining relatively intact but subject to interruptions, and stages 3 and 4 often substantially diminished. Circadian rhythms are further disrupted by continuous indoor lighting and irregular medical interventions, exacerbating the challenges of maintaining typical sleep patterns in the ICU environment. Sleep disruption in patients on mechanical ventilation can be attributed to various factors, including noise-related disturbances. This includes ventilator alarms, which may be caused by inappropriate threshold settings or delayed alarm inactivation, as well as alarms from humidifiers. These auditory disruptions can significantly affect a patient's ability to achieve restorative sleep. Nursing interventions can also contribute to sleep disruption in mechanically ventilated patients. Activities such as airway suction, nebulizer delivery, and blood draws, while necessary for patient care, can lead to frequent awakenings and interruptions during sleep. Pharmacological factors play a role as well, as certain medications commonly used in ICU settings can impact sleep patterns. Benzodiazepines and opioids for example, are known to decrease REM sleep and deep non-REM sleep, further complicating the patient's sleep architecture. Additionally, neuromuscular blocking drugs may be used, which can affect sleep quality. The choice of ventilator mode, such as pressure support ventilation, also has the potential to influence sleep patterns in mechanically ventilated patients. All of these factors must be carefully considered and managed to optimize the quality of sleep for individuals requiring mechanical ventilation in intensive care settings. To optimize the sleep environment for patients on mechanical ventilation, several measures can be implemented. 
Firstly, addressing noise-related disruptions is crucial. It's important to close all doors to minimize noise transmission. Additionally, reducing call and machine alarm sounds during the nighttime hours is essential. Medical staff should maintain a quiet conversational tone, and the use of earplugs can help patients block out unwanted noise. Secondly, managing lighting is vital for improving sleep quality. Central lighting in the intensive care unit should be turned off during the nighttime hours. Patients can benefit from the use of eye shades to further block out light, while dim bedside lighting should be employed for necessary patient care activities. Thirdly, patient care practices should be adapted to promote uninterrupted sleep. Unnecessary tests and blood collection should be prohibited during the nighttime hours. Ensuring patients have adequate sedation and assessing their pain levels with the use of appropriate analgesics as needed can contribute to better sleep. Additionally, using the assist control ventilation mode during the night can help maintain stable ventilation support while minimizing disturbances. These strategies collectively aim to create a more conducive sleep environment for patients on mechanical ventilation in the intensive care setting. Various studies have been conducted on sleep-inducing drugs, such as melatonin, dexmedetomidine, and propofol, in treating critically ill patients. However, no drugs have shown effects. Dexmedetomidine has been used in small studies to induce sleep only at night. It has been reported that it can increase stage 2 of sleep and preserve the day-night sleep cycle. However, a randomized control trial of 100 subjects reported that low-dose dexmedetomidine had no significant effects on sleep. Melatonin, a hormone naturally produced by the pineal gland in response to darkness, has garnered interest as a potential sleep aid for ICU patients. However, a recent Cochrane review was unable to determine whether melatonin improved sleep quality or quantity in critically ill patients, and the 2018 PADI's guidelines make no recommendation regarding their use in sleep. Further investigations are needed before routine use of melatonin to promote sleep in the ICU. Propofol, commonly used for deep sedation and anesthesia, can lead to decreased REM sleep compared to patients not receiving it. Several studies examining its use for sleep improvement in the ICU found insufficient evidence to confirm its effectiveness, leading to non-recommendation in the 2018 PADI's guidelines. Atypical antipsychotics such as olanzapine and quetiapine, typical antipsychotics such as holoperidol and trazodone have not been well studied and their use for sleep promotion remain off-label. In summary, promoting sleep in the ICU encompasses a multifaceted approach that includes encouraging mobility and maintaining circadian rhythms. While there is limited scientific backing for pharmacological interventions, a wide array of non-pharmacological tools and strategies are available to enhance sleep quality and patterns offering healthcare providers a diverse toolkit for addressing this critical aspect of patient care. Thank you for watching.